In the vast landscapes of historical Japan, amidst the backdrop of warring clans and shifting allegiances, emerged a figure of unparalleled skill and depth, Miyamoto Musashi. Renowned not just as Japan's greatest swordsman, but also as the author of The Book of Five Rings, his life was an intricate dance of martial prowess and philosophical contemplation. The world around him teemed with battles, both physical and ideological. Yet Musashi often stood apart, marked by a silent strength that wasn't just about withholding words, but embodying an entire philosophy. This enigmatic demeanor, a blend of quiet contemplation and decisive action, echoed a lesson. In an era marked by clamor and chaos, what could the silent strength of Miyamoto Musashi teach the world? How might his quiet resilience be a beacon in navigating the tumultuous seas of life? Historical Context of Musashi's Time As dawn broke over the islands of Japan during the Sengoku period, the nation was not one of peace, but of strife. Powerful daimyos waged war against each other, vying for dominance, their samurai warriors clashing in fierce battles. The very earth seemed to tremble under the weight of clashing swords and conflicting ambitions. It was this volatile era that witnessed the rise of Miyamoto Musashi. Amidst this turbulence, the samurai lived by a set of unwavering values. The Bushido, or the way of the warrior, was not just a martial code but a way of life. It spoke of honor, discipline, and loyalty. But intertwined with these tenets was also a profound sense of introspection and a quest for mastery, not just over the enemy, but over oneself. Musashi, with his dual-wielded swords and serene demeanor, embodied this ethos. He was a product of his time, yet he stood apart, charting a unique path that merged the way of the sword with the way of inner silence. From the misty beaches of Funajima, where a young Musashi faced the esteemed Yoshioka clan, to his climactic duel against the formidable Sasaki Kojiro on Ganryu Island, each confrontation was a testament to his unwavering focus and the silent strength that pulsed within him. But what's even more intriguing is the way Musashi approached these duels. He never basked in the glory of his triumphs. Instead, with an almost meditative calm, he dissected every move, every feint, every thrust. Victory or defeat, each duel was a lesson, a stepping stone to perfection. It's said that after his battles, Musashi would retreat into solitude. In these moments of quiet reflection, he wasn't just nursing his wounds or resting his tired limbs. He was analyzing, strategizing, and preparing. With each opponent he faced, he saw an opportunity to learn, to adapt, and to evolve. His blade, thus, was not just forged in the fires of the forge, but in the crucible of relentless self-improvement. This continuous cycle of combat, reflection, and refinement made Musashi not just a master swordsman, but also a philosopher-warrior who recognized that true mastery over others began with mastery over oneself. The Book of Five Rings and Its Teachings In the vast ocean of martial art literature, there emerges a beacon of strategic thought, Musashi's The Book of Five Rings. More than just a combat manual, it delves into the psyche of a warrior, interlacing the physicality of battle with the mentality and spirituality that governs it. At its core, this text is a manifestation of Musashi's life experiences, chronicling his beliefs, strategies, and principles. But as you peel back the layers, it's evident that the teachings aren't confined to the realm of swordsmanship alone. They extend into the vast expanse of life's many battles, providing readers with tools to tackle challenges both on and off the battlefield. The rings, earth, water, fire, wind, and void, aren't just elements in a philosophical sense. They are stages of understanding, each with its own lesson and wisdom. Earth represents the foundation, the grounding principles upon which strategies are built. It's where the physical techniques are perfected, where the warrior learns to stand firm against the onslaughts of life. Water, fluid and adaptable, stands for flexibility and strategy and thought. Musashi emphasized the importance of adapting to the opponent's moves, much like water molds itself to its container. Fire signifies the heat of battle, the fierce aggression, and the spirit of the warrior. Yet, it also warns of the dangers of unchecked emotions, highlighting the need for controlled passion. Wind represents the influences from outside, the external traditions and techniques that a warrior might encounter. It reminds us to be open to learning from others, 
but cautions against being swept away by every new trend. Finally, the void is the realm of things not yet understood, the abstract, the spiritual. It's the culmination of Musashi's philosophy, an urging to look beyond the physical realm and recognize the intangible forces at play. Together, these rings don't just craft a formidable warrior, but mold a mindful individual, one who is as adept at wielding the sword as they are at navigating the complexities of life. After understanding the intricate layers of Musashi's strategic philosophy, it's crucial to recognize where these revelations stemmed from. The depth of his insights, as laid out in The Book of Five Rings, was profoundly influenced by his choice to seek solitude, a decision not made lightly in an age of constant warfare and societal duties. Musashi, often termed as the Hermit Swordsman, consciously retreated into isolation multiple times throughout his life. These weren't mere breaks from society, but intense periods of introspection and reflection. Each retreat was a journey inward, a time to digest experiences, learn from past duels, and devise new strategies. Within the embrace of solitude, Musashi found himself surrounded by the natural world. Without the distractions of urban life, he could truly observe, internalize, and learn. Rivers taught him fluidity, rocks resilience, and the wind whispered lessons of adaptability. Nature, in all its raw beauty and power, became his silent instructor. This relationship was symbiotic. Just as nature instructed Musashi, he immortalized its lessons in his writings, art, and techniques. The tranquility of a forest, the relentless push of a stream, the patience of a mountain. These elements found echoes in his fighting style and life philosophy. Solitude was not a place of escape for Musashi, but a sanctuary for growth. It was here, away from the world's noise, that the silent strength of the samurai was truly forged. And in understanding this, one begins to fathom the depth of Musashi's wisdom, transcending the battlefield and resonating with the many arenas of life. The power of silence. Flowing seamlessly from his periods of solitude, it becomes evident that Musashi's self-imposed isolation wasn't just a physical retreat, but a manifestation of a deeper principle he held dear, the power of silence. It was not merely the absence of noise, but a potent tool in both his martial strategy and spiritual journey. On the battlefield and during personal confrontations, Musashi's use of silence was masterful. Instead of engaging in loud proclamations or aggressive banter that was common among warriors trying to intimidate their foes, he would often stand silent, using the quiet as a disruptive force. This tactic was unsettling to many opponents, forcing them into a state of anxious anticipation making them overthink and thereby seizing control of the duel even before the first move was made. This silence was strategic, placing him multiple steps ahead of his adversaries. Yet this practice extended beyond combat. Musashi recognized silence as a window to introspection. In moments of quietude, unburdened by the clamor of external distractions, he could delve deep into his own psyche. It provided an environment where he could scrutinize his actions, decisions, and emotions. Through this, he continually refined his thoughts, beliefs, and techniques, making them sharper, clearer, and more profound. To Musashi, silence wasn't just golden. It was a diamond, hard, clear, and invaluable. He used it to hone his skills, to meditate on his life's purpose, and to create an aura of enigma that became legendary. By embracing silence, he showcased its immense potential, not just as a martial strategy, but as a life philosophy. Emerging from the silent reflections that deepened his understanding, Musashi's journey took him beyond the realm of the sword. His introspective periods were not just about martial refinement, but broadening horizons. The same hands that wielded the blade with unmatched precision danced gracefully with brushes on scrolls, crafting intricate calligraphy, and molded earth into sculptures. While renowned as a swordsman, Musashi was an embodiment of a true Renaissance man of feudal Japan. For him, Mastery was not limited to one art. It was about seeking perfection in all forms of expression. This diversification was not a diversion, but an extension of his philosophy. Each art form was a new language, a fresh medium to convey his profound insights and explore varied facets of existence. But underlying all these pursuits was an essential principle, the ethos of the lifelong student. Musashi believed that complacency was the enemy of mastery. No matter his accolades or accomplishments, 
He approached each day with the curiosity of a novice, eager to learn, to refine, to evolve. This humility in the face of vast knowledge and skill underscores the depth of his wisdom. In continuously seeking to learn, Musashi showcased the path to true mastery, an unending journey, not a destination. The Two Swords Philosophy Emerging from a life of continuous learning, Musashi's multifaceted journey led him to the realization of a profound dual philosophy, elegantly symbolized through the two swords he often wielded. In the art of combat, where every movement was a dance between life and death, Musashi introduced a revolutionary doctrine, Niten Ichi Ryu, or the two heavens, as one technique. While one sword cut through the tangible resistance of the opponent, the other was believed to pierce through the metaphysical, creating a harmony of physical prowess and spiritual insight. The longer dominant sword often represented the material world, the challenges, the tasks, and the tangible obstacles we face daily. In contrast, the shorter accompanying blade resonated with the spiritual, the internal battles, the quest for purpose, and the soul's deeper yearnings. Yet, this philosophy wasn't merely limited to the battlefield. In our modern lives, where dichotomies often pull us apart, between career and passion, duty and desire, or the tangible and the intangible, Musashi's dual sword philosophy serves as a compass. He illustrates that true mastery and balance are achieved not by choosing one over the other, but by learning to navigate both simultaneously. The essence lies in acknowledging these dualities, understanding their unique rhythms, and orchestrating them into a harmonious dance. For Musashi, the wielding of two swords was more than just a combat technique. It was a way of life, emphasizing the necessity to honor both the seen and the unseen, the spoken and the silent, the external challenges and the internal growth. In doing so, he offers a timeless roadmap for individuals seeking equilibrium in a world of contrasts. Emerging from the philosophy of dualities, Musashi's teachings didn't just remain confined to the arena of swordsmanship. His impact has rippled across time, influencing a multitude of arenas beyond the battlefields of feudal Japan. Modern martial disciplines. Today, the principles embedded in the Book of Five Rings reverberate in the dojos across the world. From precise footwork in karate to the strategic advances in judo, traces of Musashi's techniques and philosophies can be discerned. Beyond martial mastery, but his reach extends even further. The business world, with its intricate strategies and maneuvers, often mirrors the battlefield. Leaders and strategists have found wisdom in Musashi's writings, applying them to navigate corporate challenges and carve out victories. Likewise, artists and creators, inspired by his calligraphy and sculpting, harness his philosophies to craft masterpieces, recognizing that the journey to mastery in any craft mirrors the way of the samurai. In Musashi's legacy, we find a testament to the timeless nature of true wisdom, principles that, once established, find resonance across ages and disciplines. Emulating the Silent Power Following Musashi's ripple of influence through martial arts dojos, business boardrooms, and art studios, it's clear that his silent power isn't just a relic of the past, but a potent tool for our present. However, one might wonder, how can we, living in a world of incessant notifications and perennial distractions, embody this silent strength? Mindfulness in action. Musashi's battles weren't won solely by the sword, but by a conscious presence of mind. In the same vein, our battles against overwhelm and distraction can be conquered through mindfulness. Taking pauses during the day, focusing singularly on tasks, or even indulging in activities like meditation or mindful walking can cultivate a centeredness reminiscent of Musashi's. By being present in our actions, we not only enhance our efficiency, but also connect deeper with our surroundings and ourselves. A way forward. In today's world, where noise is constant and silence is rare, channeling Musashi's philosophy becomes not just desirable, but essential. His silent strength isn't about the absence of sound, but about filtering out the unnecessary, focusing on the essential, and moving forward with deliberate purpose. Whether it's decluttering our spaces, refining our focus at work, or seeking solace in nature, we can draw from Musashi's well of wisdom. Embracing this silence and focus, we can forge paths that resonate with purpose, mastery, and an unwavering strength amidst the cacophony of the modern world.
As we journey through the narrative of Miyamoto Musashi, it becomes evident that his life wasn't just that of a master swordsman, but that of a profound philosopher, artist, and thinker. His choices, whether it was living in solitude or choosing silence over unnecessary chatter, were a testament to a profound understanding of the human condition. Amidst the turbulent currents of his era, he remained an unyielding rock, drawing strength from an internal reservoir of quietude. It's this wisdom, rooted in silent power and mindful mastery, that remains timeless, speaking to us even today, resonating through the deafening noises of our age. It's tempting to get lost in the clamor of our daily lives, to react instead of reflect, to speak without purpose, or to act without intention. However, the life of Musashi beckons us towards another path, a path of introspection, of deliberate action, and of seeking strength in silence. It's a call to not just admire his philosophy from afar, but to internalize it, to stand tall amidst the storms, to choose depth over breadth, and to find our own silent power. So, as we step forward into the cacophony of our modern world, let's carry with us the lessons from Musashi's life, harnessing his timeless wisdom to face life's myriad challenges with grace, strength, and silent resolve.